Mani, thank you very much for joining me. So tell, tell us about what Banyan Nation does and how you contribute to being a good uh, green citizen. Uh, firstly, I'm really grateful to be here. I'm absolutely enjoying the event. Uh, Banyan Nation is a market-defining plastics recycling company. We help top brands such as Unilever use more recycled plastic instead of virgin plastic for their packaging and product uh, requirements. We've developed a highly informal sector integrative model. Uh, rather than displacing the informal recyclers, we work in close collaboration with thousands of street corner recyclers in our country. We bring the discarded plastics to our centralized recycling facility in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. uh, we've developed a proprietary washing and recycling method that eliminates over 90% of the surface contaminants. And we produce the recycled resin or the granules that have engineering performance that is comparable to virgin polymer. Mm -hmm. And those granules are shipped off to the brands who then go ahead and make the packaging. So that's really the uh, scope and uh, the type of work we do right. at Banyan Nation. And, and tell us about the volume. I mean, how, how many shampoo bottles, for example, do you, do you bring in and do you put out? Sure. Uh, in the past 12 months, over 350 million mm -hmm. uh, shampoo, lotion, body wash bottles have been manufactured in our country for top brands uh, uh, using our recycled uh, resin. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you go to a store and pick up a Surf XL or a Comfort mm -hmm. laundry detergent bottle, over 50% of the plastic used to manufacture that bottle comes from recycled material produced by Banyan Nation mm -hmm. and the rest comes from virgin sources. Right, so the material you produce is a raw material for other bottle manufacturers or remanufacturers, is that correct? So you're not actually making the, the bottle itself? That's correct. Uh, we are uh, uh, what you would call as the recycler. Mm -hmm. uh, we are responsible for collecting curated streams of plastic. So for example, when you throw uh, your, your domestic waste out, it has your shampoo bottles, lotions, whatnot. So we work with the Kabadiwalas to collect that plastic and we bring it to our factory and there is a series of processes like grinding, washing, recycling and we produce the resin mm -hmm. or the granule that forms the raw material for these large right. manufacturers. Right. So tell us, when you say 350 million bottles, give, a, give us a context of what this means in the overall output of plastic and plastic use in a country like India. Mm, absolutely. See, India uh, produces and consumes over 20 million tons of virgin polymer today. Mm -hmm. And it is important to understand uh, uh, plastics in terms of their resin uh, classification and the sub-resin classification as well. Uh, what is uh, uh, typically very popular is the water bottle uh, and, and that is called PET. However, PET is only 10% of the overall 20 million uh, tons that India produces and consumes. Mm -hmm. A bulk of it, which is 60%, forms under the subcategory called polyolefins which is PP and PE. Mm -hmm. And PP and PE are extremely versatile resins because your auto components, mm -hmm. your pipes, your daily buckets, mugs, chairs, benches, and your FMCG packaging, whether in rigid form or flexible form, is uh, produced using the polyolefins. Banyan Nation operates in this space uh, where we are trying to recover, recycle, and develop technologies uh, in, the, in, in this space. Now, if you look at the FMCG rigid packaging, which is the shampoo bottles and lotions, per annum, India produces and consumes 500,000 tons, mm -hmm. which is about 5 lakh uh, mm -hmm. tons. And currently, we are doing about 10,000 tons per annum. So really, it's a drop in the ocean, if you ask me, and there's a long way to go. But the good news is that almost all of it can be recovered, recycled, and used back in packaging with minimal degradation in quality, if mm -hmm. done well. So w what are the percentages that uh, we are looking at today and mm. what could we aim for in terms of all the, the, the petrochemical products that are produced mm. versus what we are recycling today? And what's the optimal that we can maybe even in a utopian way aim for? Yeah, it's a nuanced question and we have to ap appreciate the complexity of plastics as a raw material. Mm. Uh, and uh, to expound and elaborate on this, not all plastics are the same. Right. Uh, design for recyclability is something that uh, the manufacturers over the past 20 years haven't optimized for. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, your question becomes highly uh, nuanced and loaded because a recycler like Banyan Nation 
even though uh, we are recognized globally and in India as being one of the best recyclers, we have a challenge when it comes to the contaminants of poly polymers. Mm. Uh, and, and to give due respect to the gravitas of your question, let us take uh, a, a multi-layer laminate, for example, which is a flexible film. Uh, and to give you an example, the chips packets, the Lay's mm. uh, packet, mm. it comes with a heavy coated paint on the surface, a metallic coating on the inside, and multiple types of resins mm. as layers of polymers. Mm. For example, you will have PET PE laminate, which means that it is using both PET mm. and polyethylene as two layers. And there is an adhesive layer as well. So if I was a recycler, first of all, PET and uh, PE are non-compatible polymers. Mm. And I cannot recycle them. Then the metallic content and the ink content is almost 40%. So if you are looking at recycling technologies, your yield is going to be very less. Mm. And the cost of recycling is going to be very high. So design for recyclability, unless baked into the fundamental ethos of packaging, uh, you, uh, I mean, unless it is baked in, right. you're really not going to be able to get ad uh, get the advantage. But I'll answer your question. Sorry for the uh, prelude on this one. The answer to your question is rigid polymers, if manufactured in a scientific manner without any contamination, can be recycled to a very large extent. All FMCG rigid packaging, which is the shampoo bottles, lotion bottles, or your lube industry. For example, the IOCL, HPCL, Shell, Castrol, lube bottles, all these, and the Vanaspati oils, mm. they can be recycled. And with the right balance of washing technology and virgin polymer mix, you can continue the recycling in a fairly long, infinite manner. Right, and and would it be correct to say that uh, in, in the input that you get in terms of uh, old bottles coming in, they would themselves have a, per, a certain percentage or a higher percentage of recycled material to start Fantastic with? Fantastic question. Uh, and, and this is what calls for regulation in the manufacturing as well. Uh, the reason why Banyan Nation started to uh, uh, first demonstrate circular economy in the shampoo bottle lotion segment is that, Historically, FMCG companies have shied away from the use of recycled polymer because there were no consensus recyclers such as Banyan Nation. And when you are developing uh, packaging for human contact application, they felt it was easier to use virgin polymer than to use recycled polymer. So historically, all FMCG packaging was made from virgin polymers. So today, uh, Banyan Nation, what it is doing is, we are bringing in advanced technologies to make recycled polymer on par with virgin polymers, mm -hmm. right? As a result, the manufacturing of the bottles that is happening today with our recycled plastic is very good. There is no degradation. But that is not the case with the other applications that are not uh, 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 produced for main brands. So for example, the buckets, tables, benches, chairs that you're using in India, all have recycled polymers that have no quality uh, checks in place. They have additives that also aren't going through stringent quality checks. So which means that if you are running a materials recovery facility, your inputs are pre-contaminated with materials that are of substandard quality, and as a result, end recyclers like us have to be very careful in what we pick. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic uh, question, and you actually are bringing out the deeper problem uh, here, which is <clears throat> if the manufacturing itself is unregulated, mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry about it, and if manufacturing itself is using low quality additives mm -hmm. and low quality feedstock, then the downstream recyclers will not be able to produce uh, high quality materials. Right. And yeah. Right, so last two questions. So uh, how do you see this, you know, so you work with companies today. Yes. And obviously companies are in consumer products are large uh, creators or manufacturers of bottles or storing mat storage materials and so on. Uh, how do you see this business model evolving? Is it Could it go differently or is this the way that it looks like it's going to go? And secondly, what's the, what's the sustainability for yourself or for companies like yourself in, uh, in coming days and months? No, absolutely. Uh, the first question is, the use of recycled polymer as a mainstream raw material is an idea whose time has come. No longer uh, it is acceptable for companies to use virgin polymers. Because the more virgin polymer you consume, the more waste, fresh waste you produce, and the more you have to manage downstream. By recovering discarded materials and putting back into mainstreams, you have the dual advantage of minimizing virgin plastic consumption and minimizing the litter as well, right? Because you're not producing fresh litter. So that's an idea whose time has come. 
In terms of uh, uh, the long term view, uh, 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 in terms of how brands will adopt, regulation has come into place. It is no longer uh, uh, out of your own volition. Companies aren't doing it out of their own volition, and some companies are out of their own sustainability mandates. The law of the land states that by 2025, all companies must use no less than 25% of recycled polymer and by 2027, no less than 50% of recycled polymer. So the regulation has right. really, really kicked in and that's a fantastic thing. In terms of Banyan Nation's uh, long-term sustenance, uh, we are a market innovator. Uh, we are not only optimizing the input feedstock quality, but constantly driving innovation to bring the cost of circular economy down. So uh, our facility in Hyderabad is um, uh, designed to be fully automated. We have several world-class systems in place that is bringing down the cost of manufacturing so that we can provide sustainable materials to brands at a parity to virgin mm. so that the consumer is also not getting right. affected. So that, that is uh, the onus is on me as an entrepreneur and innovator to drive the cost of circularity down so that in three, four years, I give the parity to the market so that they are able to adopt more recycled resins. Right, and what made you do this? <laughs> uh, I, I'll give you the, uh, I wanted to give you the funny answer, but uh, a lot of alcohol and uh, youth maybe, but no. See, I've always been passionate about solving real problems, real world problems. Uh, making the next better iPhone in Silicon Valley didn't cut out for me. Uh, so what I always decided along with my partner Raj, my team, uh, Rashi, Venkat, who all been uh, very successful in their own journeys. Uh, is to solve the most pressing issue of our time, plastics, right? I mean, the problem of plastic pollution. So uh, I've always been like this because I wanted to solve real problems that affected you and me on a day-to-day -day life. And so uh, I wanted to come back to India, look at edtech, healthcare, waste management. And I felt that if India aspired to be counted among the great nations of the world, we first need to clean up our mess and make India a much cleaner and better place. And I wanted to leave uh, a better world for my son and my daughters. And that's the reason why right. I picked this up. And, and I wish you all the best for that. So last question. So uh, how, how do you think uh, you could benefit or what would you take away from a gathering like this? See, uh, the plastic recycling industry today is at a very nascent stage. There's a lot of evangelization that needs to be done. And there's a lot of education that needs to be done, not only to my customers, but also to the investors. Um, again, the investors today in India particularly are not in a position to evaluate the merits of the technology that we're bringing in because they are still learning and they're still understanding the technologies. I think this is a great forum. Uh, it's a disarming uh, setting where we can exchange the ideas and, and, and actually um, uh, foster a healthy uh, dialogue between the investors. Uh, I, I think investors have always been caught up in the asset light exponential model. And if everybody is going to be asset light exponential marketplace, who's actually going to do the recycling? Mm. And I think that dialogue where asset heavy sometimes is absolutely important. Investment in R&D can bring out real value, both economics and to the society. I think these kinds of meaningful dialogues can place in a very disarming uh, and a, a charming setting, if I may say so, uh, <laughs> here. So um, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm really stoked to be here. Right. Wonderful. Uh, nice talking to you, Mani, and wish you all the My best pleasure. once again. Thank you. Take care.